Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Go ahead and turn around. Greet somebody before you're seated. Say hi. I know it's wet outside, but you're going to love today's message, today's title. So good morning, everyone, and welcome to Crossroads. I want to thank you all for joining us here. You all sounded great, by the way. I don't know which side it was. You know, I don't know about this side here, but maybe it was this side. It was Andrew. But you all sounded great for that song. For those watching online, we just thank you for being with us today and being a part of Crossroads for today. We just pray that the message would bless you. Now, we're going to be going to Zechariah 10, Zechariah 10, verse 1. But before we go there, I want to take care of a little bit of announcements for, with, uh, for you all. Next week, Sunday already, next Sunday is our fall fellowship slash Christmas party, which will take place here. That's December 4th at 1130, right after service. You all should have received text by now. If you're part of our system, uh, Dan's already taken care of that. It's a text that came from, ready, these five numbers, 34040. It doesn't say Crossroads. It doesn't say Marcel. It doesn't say Dan. It comes from those numbers. But you have to open that up, hit the link, because we need you to RSVP. We need to know how many people are coming so we have our numbers straight for food. And for those of you who think you're chili cooks, this is an opportunity for you to show off your skills. We've got about three or four people that have already signed up saying their chili is number one. So make sure that you sign up, bring your pot of chili. There'll be other food as well available. We've got games, we've got prizes, we've got toys, we've got bicycles to give away. And I'm not talking about a mini bike, Andrew, a big one for you, all right? But you're not allowed to play. But we've got a lot of stuff, but we need you to RSVP, and we need it by Wednesday, okay? So go look through your texts. I, initially, we had sent out emails a while back, and nobody wanted to look at their emails. So we said, you know what? We'll fix it. We're going to send texts. And now everybody got a text, and they're like, spam. No, open that up. There's a link. It goes in there. Lets you, it lets us know, hey, yes, you're coming. How many numbers are coming? And then, yes, if you're interested in being in the cook-off or not. So please send that to us. We all got the date, got the instructions, right? We're set. And if we don't have your number, come see us after service, and we'll make sure that we get you on the list, all right? All right. Okay, so today's word. Let's go to Zechariah. Today's word, Zechariah chapter 10, verse 1. Here we go. It should be up behind me. Yeah, look at that. I love the AV team. Zechariah 10.1 says, ask the Lord for rain. I think somebody's been asking already based on what's happening today, right? Ask the Lord for rain in the time of the latter rain. The Lord will make flashing clouds. He will give them showers of rain, grass in the field for everyone. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for your reign, O oh Lord, and we ask you to reign in this place, Father God. Reign in our hearts, reign in our minds, reign in our life, Lord, and just dwell here as we share the word that it will fall on great soil, good ground to grow and produce for your kingdom and nothing else. We give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so in our message today, there's a question already I have for you all. You ready? How many of you have showered lately? I See, that was rhetorical. You all didn't have to. Man, I saw hands going up. I saw people like, I'm good. You know, I'm good. No, it was a rhetorical question. Showered lately, right? Did you realize that there are tons of showers out there? I didn't know this until I started, you know, working with Hannah, and she started telling me about this shower, that shower. There are bridal showers. There are baby showers. There are re regular bath showers. There are bachelorette showers. There's something known as a kitchen shower. A kitchen shower. I'm like, what? Look it up. I'm not lying. Y'all looking at me like, he making stuff up. Look it up. There are so many showers out there, and these are showers that are asked for, given, and received. But do we ask for the rain showers of God in our lives? Do we ask for the rain showers of God in our lives? Because here we have Zechariah now. We're going to talk about Zechariah and why he says, ask for the rain. Ask for the rain. Zechariah is one of the minor prophets. He's actually the 11th minor prophet, and the difference between minor and major is just the content. So it's not that he's any less than the others. But he's been tasked by God to prophesy to the kingdom of Judah. And, and during this verse and during this time, what's happening is, is that the tribes of Judah, the 12, have been split. So you've got 10 on one side, 2 on the other, and God sends Zechariah to the two 
because God had assigned them something to do. They were supposed to build the temple, rebuild the temple, and they hadn't done so yet. So he sends them off to rebuild them. God had given them this assignment. They didn't do it, so he sends the prophet and says, hey, you need to go talk to these people. But what's interesting about Zechariah and how his approach was is that you all have heard of prophets and that prophets come in and they give the word sharp, you know, ready, hard. But that wasn't what Zechariah did. Zechariah didn't take that approach. Zechariah actually came in with words of encouragement. He didn't come in harsh. You know, when you think about it, it happens many times in, in ministry, at work, at home with your husband or wife. <coughs> I'm going to move to this side, with your kids, with stuff that here they are, they have God telling them to do something, and they gaffed them off, you know, military term. They, they just didn't listen. So you would think, okay, once you tell somebody to do something, what's the normal thing to do? To come back and tell them again, either in a harder manner, um, a stronger manner, and unfortunately, in some cases, a harsher manner. And that's what happens a lot, where people are coming with the harsher approach, and that's how our culture and our society has been groomed. But Zechariah doesn't take that approach because he says, you know what? I don't follow culture. I follow God. I'm not led by society. I'm led by God. So he follows God, and he's led by God, and he doesn't come to them looking at their past failures. What he does is he comes to them and provides them hope for a future. He provides them hope for a future. I got one amen. You all got to talk to me, okay? It's tough looking at some faces that are like a hope for a future, right? So he doesn't want them focusing on, hey, you didn't do this. You know, God told me to tell you you didn't do it, but I don't want you to focus on what you didn't do. I want you to focus on the hope that he has for you in the future because isn't that what Christianity is all about? Isn't that what Christianity is all about, where we go to people and we talk to them and we say stuff like, your future in God trumps your failure in the past. Your future in God is what's valuable. I don't want to hear about what you didn't do, the missteps you didn't take, the shortcomings that happened. I want to talk to you about your future in God, and that's what Christianity is about. So that's how Zechariah comes. I mean, we read in Scripture, right, about Jesus talking about leaving the 99 for the one, right? He leaves for the one, and he goes to that one with grace and with mercy, and he goes to provide that grace and mercy to them. But what about the 99? What about the 99? Because we're the same way. We're ready, you know, all churches. We're ready to evangelize. We want the church to grow. We go out to the community. We go speak to folks, and we come to them saying, how are you? You know, God is great. Let me talk to you. We deal with the one that way, but what about the 99? Are we dealing with the 99 that way, or do we deal with the 99 in a harsh manner? Do we deal with them from the pulpit like you failed to do what you were supposed to do? Do we deal with them in such a manner that, you know, they feel like, I don't feel the grace of God. I don't feel the mercy of God. All I feel is the banging of the Bible, the thumping of the word. Well, no, Zechariah does it different. So what I'm here to do for you today is I'm here to focus on the 99. So this message isn't for new believers. This message isn't an evangelistic message. This is for the 99 that are here, that are listening online, because God has me here today to give you a message not to focus on your past failures, not to focus on your past uh, shortcomings, but to provide you hope for a future, to let you know about the future that you have in Him because God has so much in store for us. He has so much in store for us, but too many look to focus on lost opportunities instead of future gains in him. We look at the lost opportunities. We look at the lost opportunities of the past, and that's why during this time of year, there's so much depression. There's so, much, so many issues because people are just looking at the wrong things. They're looking at what they don't have. They're looking at what they missed out on, and that's what Zechariah is coming to these people with. He recognizes and he tells them, you know what? God wants to accomplish significant things in you. God wants you to do something great. God wants you, God wants to set you aside, and he has already set you aside for his purpose, for what he wants you to do. And even though you may not have done him, even though you might be, you know, he's running on the treadmill on a 5 and you're on a 1.1, you're not quite there yet. God's saying, that's okay. I want you to move forward and I want you to do this. And it's the same for us. We may have failed to do certain things. There's stuff that we could have done, stuff that we should have done, but it's not the end of our story. 
It doesn't stop there. It continues there. So Zechariah here, he gives them instructions. And what's the instruction? Ask the Lord for rain. Ask the Lord for rain. Think about it. Rain. Ask for rain. We ask for everything but rain. We ask the Lord for so many things but rain. The church has grown to be in such a way where we'll ask for new buildings. We'll ask for equipment. We'll ask for new carpeting. We'll ask for new seating. We'll ask for new paint jobs. We'll ask for all this new stuff. Hey, give me a new car. Give me a new house. Give me a new this. But we don't ask for more of him. We refuse to ask for more of him, and basically we've asked for more stuff instead of more of him in our life. More of your presence, Lord. More of your power. More of who you are. More of your reflection in my life. More of you instead of more of these other things. You see, we do have and we do ask for things that will enrich our life, right? There are many things out there that will enrich our life. You know, we have spouses. We have kids. We have different things. But those things enrich our life, but there's only one thing that actually provides life, God. There's only one thing that provides life, and that's who we have to ask for more of. We need his outpouring. We need the rain. We need his presence. We need his power. We need his overflow in our lives. We need more of him and nothing else. The other stuff will come as long as we focus on him first and focus on the future with him. We need it. So Zechariah says, ask for it. Ask for the rain. Ask for the rain. But then he says, ask for it in the latter rain. Ask, do so in the latter rain. Now, what's the latter rain? You know, what does that even mean, the latter rain? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. You know, I love the interaction. EC, you're supposed to be helping me out here. Ask for the latter rain. So what does it mean? Well, back during these times, they dealt with two seasons, right? They dealt with a dry season, and they dealt with a raining season. You ready? I'm about to get deep. The dry season meant it was dry. The raining season meant that it rained. Come on. Come on now. Come on. That's some deep stuff right there. That's some theological stuff. I went to seminary for that one. All right. But you had the dry season. Now, what would happen in the dry season was it would cause, of course, the land to be dry, that there was nothing that could be done with that land. It was hard. Nothing can penetrate it. And nothing new was going to be able to grow out of that ground during the dry season. Then you had the rainy season. But the rainy season was made up of three parts. You ready? There was the former rain, the winter rain, and, of course, as we're listening today, the latter rain. Now, what would happen with the former rain is that it would be a soft, light rain. You know, it wasn't heavy. It wasn't hard. It was enough rain to begin to provide some type of moisture to soften the ground. And then as this ground got soft, what would happen is that it would be able to absorb more water, and also you'd be able to plant seeds in it. So you would have the seeds there, and then when heavier rains came, the seed would actually be in place, The ground would be able to absorb it, and nothing would run off, nothing would wash away. You know, I've dealt with trying to plant grass seed and putting it up, and I'm like, yes, I'm getting ahead of it. I've seen the forecast, rain is coming, and I'm like, great, I go out there and put the seed, but it's not a form of rain. It's a heavy rain, and what happens? It washes away on my grass seed. There goes 40 bucks down the drain, literally, and I'm like, golly, what happened? It's because it wasn't a form of rain. So that's what you have there, the former rain. Now, some of you, you found yourself in a dry season, right? And what God has done is he's provided you some former rain, where there have been moments where you're like, Lord, I'm in this tough spot. I just don't see you. And he provides you just a glimpse of him. He provides you a little bit of rain to show you that my presence is still here. He provides you a little bit of his moisture, of his presence, of his spirit to let you know that he still loves you. And the purpose of this rain is to begin to soften your heart, to begin to soften you so that he, you know that he loves you and that he's there for you and that he cares for you. And then that way, because that small rain of his presence has been in your life, you begin to let him in slowly but surely, just enough so that every seed that's planted in you, every word that's spoken to you begins to grow and take root and doesn't get washed away. So that's the, <laughs> so that's the former rain, all right? So the winter rain, what happens with the winter rain? That's the heaviest one. 
That's when the rain just starts pouring in. It's in abundance. God's rain just pours down and just begins to flood and pour into your life. And you've been there. You've known what the, those times where you've experienced the winter rain. It's when it's heaviest. It's pouring in you. You know, many of you could think about a time where everything was going great, where you were seeing blessing after blessing after blessing, open door after open door. Like, God, you blessed me with this job. Oh, my goodness, it's great. God, you blessed me in this relationship. Oh, my goodness. God, you blessed me with a car. All of a sudden, you get check in the mail. You get this and that, and you know that you're in the midst of God's winter rain where he's just pouring an abundance in your life. He's providing you with blessings, providing you with miracles, providing you with all these things, more love, more stuff than you've ever experienced before. And what happens with heavy rain is that the more heavy rain that falls, the more overflow that takes place. So when he's providing you, when God's providing you this abundance, what's happening is, is that the overflow from your life is pouring out into others. It's pouring out into friends, into family, at your workplace, and everybody's wondering, oh, what's going on? What's happening in your life? What's gotten into you? And you're able to say, God's reign is in me. His reign is within me, and that's what's happening because I'm in the midst of his winter rain, and he's just pouring blessing after blessing in my life. Amen? So more strength to you, more peace to you, all this stuff, and everybody there around you, and all of a sudden, you have that calming about you that just spreads to others, and where they came in all erratic, you're like, the peace of God be with you. Amen? So that's God's winter rain. So now let's get to the latter rain. What is the latter rain? The latter rain is the kind of rain now that sustains life and sustains growth. It's just enough rain to actually go into the ground, just enough to go into the ground and to be able to provide the roots substance, just enough that that roots and that that which is growing is able to be sustained throughout the coming dry season, throughout the dry season that's coming again. So it's just enough that that which has grown, that which took root, has enough to sustain itself for the future. And like I said before, right, we find ourselves in those desert seasons, right? So what happens is that when you ask God to provide latter rain, what you're saying is that God is giving you enough, enough of his presence, enough of his might, enough of his glory, enough of his strength, enough of his power to sustain you during dry seasons to be able to hold you up, to be able to, that you know what, there's no more rain coming. There's dryness in the land. The situation is just a season of dryness, but I have enough of God within me that's going to sustain me throughout this. I have enough that's going to carry me forward. I have enough that's going to be able to get me through the other side. When I was in the military, in the Marine Corps, over in Saudi Arabia, we would have to fill up with canteens because there was no water to be found, and the purpose of that canteens or those canteens was to be able to sustain us throughout. Well, God's provided us just enough to be able to sustain us throughout that dry season. So we need to open ourselves up to the latter rain. We need to open ourselves up for the latter rain in preparation for the tough times, in preparation for those times because he says in this life you will have trials and tribulation, right? So he's saying, let me into your life so that during those times where you see others happy and you're not, I'm there with you. Where you feel like you don't have money but others do, know that his presence is with you. Where you see that others are gathering with family but you think you're finding yourself alone, God's saying, I'm with you. I'm there to provide for you. I'm your substance. I am there. I'm able to sustain you. So you may think it's a dry season and not a festive season and God's saying, I'm there with you. If you would just allow my latter rain to come in, I'll provide you hope for a future. I'll provide you peace that can't be shaken. I'll provide you all this stuff because I've provided you latter rain. So Zechariah is saying, ask for the rain, but ask for the latter rain because it's going to sustain you. It's going to hold you and it's going to keep you. And we need to be able to allow ourselves to be open to God and his reign. Because we all love the winter rain, right? We all love the abundance of the overflow. We all love that when it overflows to everybody else, yes, I'm being blessed, I'm being blessed. But are we open to the latter rain when we know that the desert season is coming? When we know that there'll be times like that, amen? So we need to stop dwelling on what didn't happen and what didn't take place. 
We need to stop dwelling on what didn't take place during this year because here we are, right? Here we are at the end of 2022. We're talking about the people in the time of Zechariah, the people from the tribe or from the kingdom of Judah, that they didn't do what God had told them to do. So here we are at the end of 2022, and you have to reflect on what is it, what is it that you didn't do? You know, at the beginning of 2022, January, or maybe even December 2021, everybody was writing these lists and coming up with these resolutions of what they were going to do, what they were going to accomplish, what they were going to be able to, to overcome. They were going to grow in this area, strengthen in this area, study in this area, do all of these things. But here we are, the end of November, beginning of December. Did we get any of that accomplished? And some of you are like, no. Some of you may be, yes. But don't focus on what you didn't accomplish. Focus on the future of 2023 now. Focus on what God has in store for you in the future and what he's saying to look at to receive the latter rain. Because now if you start to focus these next four weeks or so and say that, okay, Lord, I didn't do what you asked me to do. I didn't accomplish what I didn't accomplish. You put yourself in a dry season. But if you realize that he's been pouring into your life all along, he's going to sustain you for what's to come, and you'll be able to provide fruit and be able to go forward as we continue in the weeks and years ahead. Amen? So once we do, once we ask for the rain, Zechariah says that there are promises that come. He says, the Lord will make flashing clouds. Flashing clouds. I'm going to take this opportunity to teach you about clouds. I'm going to become a weatherman up here, meteorologist or whatever it's called. And you might say, why in the world is he teaching us about clouds from the pulpit? Okay, you ready? Because if you want rain in your life, you better be able to deal with cloudy days in your life. If you want rain, if you got, want God's rain, the former rain, the winter rain, the latter rain, you better be ready for clouds in your life. So you need to know about these clouds that are going to come. Now, there's multiple types of clouds in the sky. One of them is known as a stratus cloud, right? A stratus cloud is a thin cloud. It goes up very high up into the sky. It provides some type of overcast, and it stretches out for miles. But the thing about a stratus cloud is that it provides absolutely nothing. It does nothing. And when you think about it, we as Christians, we have to make sure we don't act like a stratus cloud in the church. But we think we're high up high and mighty, that we provide overcast, basically dimming the light of the Lord, and we're producing nothing for the church body or kingdom living. So let's make sure we're not like stratus clouds. But instead, there's another type of cloud. You see, that cloud right there provides no rain. But then there are raining clouds. And there are type of raining cloud. You ready? I had to look this one up, so bear with my pronunciation here. It's called the cumulonimbus cloud. Look it up. Cumulonimbus cloud. Cumulonimbus cloud. Now, what this cloud contains is rain, thunder, and lightning. Guess what that is? A flashing cloud, just like the scripture. A flashing cloud. Now, this cloud is formed by three components. Bear with me. We're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere like, I don't want a, you know, a meteorology lesson. Three components. First, this cloud, in order for a cumulus nimbus cloud to form, it needs a lifting force. It needs something that's going to be, you know, a force, a presence that's going to be lifting. And what it's lifting is the second component, which is moist air. Moist air. So here you got this, you know, this is my, this is my force here. This is my symbol of force. You got it? Okay. This is my force here, and it's lifting the moist air. And as it lifts it up, what it does is it starts to form a cloud. But I told you it needs three components, right? So here you've got the force. You've got the moist air. Now you've got the cloud, but in order for it to be a rain cloud, you need the third component. And that third component is unstable air. Unstable air. We need all three to have the flashing cloud, the rain cloud. So if we put it all together again, if you want rain, you're going to need a lifting force. If you want rain, you're going to need moist air. And if you want rain, you're going to need unstable air. So... If you want God's reign in your life, you're going to need a lifting force, which is the Holy Spirit. You're going to need that moist air, which is the presence of God. And then once you get that cloud up, you're going to need that unstable air. And that unstable air, unfortunately, is 
things that are not going well, things that you can't control, things that the drama in your life, the issues in your life, the areas, the unresolved areas, stuff that you just are not able to predict. But if you allow all three to combine, you're going to see God's power, his supernatural power take place in your life. We have to have all three. We have to have the presence or the power of the Holy Spirit. We have to have the presence of God, and you have to be willing to allow the things of your life to be handed over to God in order for him to pour his reign in your life. The problem with us is, or the problem with some people is, that they want God's reign. They want God's overflow. They want all of this, but they're not willing to provide all three requirements. They're not willing to provide all three because there's some people out there that are not willing to take our God. And you know who our God is? The living God. The living God. They're willing to, to worship other gods, other idols, but you need our God, the living God. There are some people out there that say, okay, I'll take God, but I don't believe in the Holy Spirit. So they don't want the Holy Spirit. So that's the other component. You need the power of the Holy Spirit. You need the presence of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, and then there are those that don't want to submit their issues to God. They don't want to hand them over to God. They don't want to hand over that unstable air to God in their lives and say to him, you know, you handle it. But if we would allow God to handle it, the issues we're going through, you'll see that he's preparing us for the overflow that's going to be happening for us. If we would just surrender the issues you're going through, the rain that's going to overflow us will be more than any issue that we can ever have in our lives. It'll be able to overflow, and that seed that we thought would be washed away would be the issues washed away by God, by his presence, by his power, by the Holy Spirit just moving on our lives and pouring into us over and over and over again. Amen? Amen. So here's a quick story for you. I remember when... We were dealing with renovations, and I was putting up backsplash in my kitchen. Now, I've never done that before, so bear with me. So I got it all up. I cut up the pieces. I'm looking at it, and I kind of step back like, man, that looked good. <laughs> For a rookie, I did a good job. But then you have to finish what you started, right? You got to finish what you started so it looks good, but now you have to put grout. Right, Mark? You got to put grout. So I start mixing up the grout, and I get ready, and I start putting it on, and I'm smoothing it out, and it's looking good slowly but surely, and then all of a sudden, you know, time goes by, and I get distracted, and I don't continue doing what I was tasked to do. I don't continue doing what I was set to do and what I had been working on. So what happened was, if you're familiar with this stuff, it started getting hard started getting hard, and there were pieces, there were clumps, there were stuff, and unfortunately, it was in areas of the kitchen that I couldn't just scrape it off or break it off because then I would jeopardize that which was already being worked on or that which had been worked on. So I found myself stuck. I found myself stuck, and I'm like, uh-oh. If somebody finds out that this is like this, I'm in trouble, and I can't scrape it. I can't break it off because I'm going to break the other pieces, and I can't just leave it like that because it's obvious. So I was stuck, and then I started to think, and God gave me revelation, water, more water, more water. So I began to grab more water, and I began to pour water on that which was hard. I began to add more water on that which was hard, and it began to soften. It began to soften, and then the hard piece was broken away, and then slowly but surely I was able to smooth everything out because I continued to pour more and more water on it. And folks, I give you that example because that's why we need the reign of God. That's why we need the reign of God, because if God's presence is reigning in your life, it'll get rid of the stuff that's hardened around your heart. If you allow the reign of his life to pour into you, it'll, it'll loosen and break away what's hardened in your mind. If you allow the reign to come in, it will loosen and break up what's hardened in your life. It'll, harden, it'll break away all that stuff. And if you haven't accomplished what you wanted to, if you've felt distracted, if you felt stuck, Ask the Lord for the rain. 
Ask for the rain to pour in your life. Ask for it so it can begin to flow once again, so that you can begin to flow, and no longer are you stuck, and with a hardened heart, and with a hardened mind, with a hardened attitude, you'll be free to start flowing in God's direction and put you back on course to what you had started to do, what he had tasked you to do, like God had tasked the tribe of Judah to do to complete and rebuild his temple. There are too many temples that are broken. There are too many temples that haven't been rebuilt because of the past issues. People still focusing on the past and realize that when we're talking about the temple, we're not talking about a church building. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit, and it's your temple he's talking about. That your past, your brokenness, and other stuff has made your temple crumble, and God's saying, rebuild it. Rebuild it, but you can't rebuild it without my presence. You can't rebuild it without my power, and you can't let it be rebuilt if you're not willing to show me that it's been broken in the first place. Put all those three components together and let my rain pour into you and let it build you up back again so that you can go forth and be the temple of God that I have called you to be, filled of the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? All right, so in the Scripture, right, he's saying to them, You're going to have flashing clouds. The showers are going to come. And then finally he says there'll be grass in the field. Grass in the field. And the grass here symbolizes fertility. It symbolizes health and prosperity. And then God not only says that you're going to have grass in the field, but he says that you're going to have enough for everyone. Enough for everyone. So he's going to put so much rain in your life, so much victory in your life, so much peace in your life, so much happiness in your life that you're going to be blessed, but not only blessed, you're going to be a blessing to those around you, to everyone around you, a blessing for your family, a blessing for your friends, a blessing for your co-workers, a blessing for generations to come. Amen? Over and over again, all because you've asked for the rain. Because you asked for the rain. I know as you came in this morning, it's like, ah, I don't want to go to church because it's raining. Well, that's the time when you have to open up and say, yes, Lord, pour into my life. Let it rain because it's going to sustain you for the seasons to come. Amen? Amen? Now, as I get ready to close, I want to provide you another illustration. Can I get those signs, please? Bear with my daughter because I tasked her to do this late at night. It was just something that came to me. Gabriel! Uh, EC, ladies, Kelsey, Kaylee, Tiffany, let's see, I need one more. The bride-to-be, Hannah, come on up. Yes. So just line up right here. There's six of you, right? Did I count properly? Yes. Now get in. You got to get tight because the camera. There you go. You got them? Yeah, I want to make sure they're in there. All right. So you get to hold up. This one. And keep it like this. Just keep it like that. And you get to hold up this one. Just hold it like that. Don't do nothing with it. You get to hold this one. Look at that. And I didn't put them in this order, so let's see what God is going to do here. Da-da-da. And here you go. Ooh, I like it. All right, so I want to talk about the clouds, how they're formed again for a second, all right? Just in this illustration. So the sun shines down. Everybody put yours down. No, no, don't flip it. Don't flip it. Lift it. Lift it. There you go. Put it down and just he lifts. There you go. There you go. So the sun shines, right? The sun shines down, right? And then as it shines down, it heats up the water. There we go. (laughs) Whew. We're cooking with Crisco this morning. Here we go. All right, so it heats up the water, the water evaporates, right? The water evaporates, and what happens is it begins, you know, the moist air is lifted up by a force, right? And then it meets with unstable air, right? That's my, that's my daughter's depiction of unstable air. And then, after you have the unstable air, it creates the cloud, right? And then once we have the cloud, right, then the rain comes down. Okay, so you got it so far, right? Can you see it? It's the visual. So sun shines down, right? No, no, keep it up. Keep it. <laughs> Not the sun comes down. Sun shines down. Sun shines down. The water evaporates, or the, the, the water heats up. The water begins to evaporate. 
it meets up with stable air, the cloud is formed, and then rain comes down. We good? Let's try one more again. Ready? The sun shines down. The water heats up. Right? It begins to evaporate. A force begins to lift it up, right? Then it meets up with unstable air. The cloud is formed, and the rain comes down. All righty? Now let's look at this with spiritual eyes. The sun shines down, the S-O-N, not the S-U-N. The sun shines down, right? He begins to shine down, and he begins to heat and bless your life. He begins to heat and bless your life. And then what's lifted up, what comes up above, is our praises unto God. Our praises unto God get lifted up. And in the midst of our praises unto God, we submit to him our unstable air or our trials, our tribulations, our troubles, our issues, and we provide it to him. And as we lift those things up, then... His presence, His power is there, and His power just begins to form. God's presence forms in a cloud, and as that presence forms in a cloud, then His rain comes down in our lives, and it begins to pour into us. So the sun shines down. It begins to bless you and heat you up and fire you up so that you begin to praise Him in the midst of storms, in the midst of issues, so that the cloud of His glory shows and His rain comes down in your life. Lord, folks, we need to ask for the rain. We need to ask God for the rain in the season of rain. So my question to you today is who wants the rain? Who wants his rain showers? We started out with who's taking a shower? Well, who's ready to shower? Who wants his shower? Now, why do I share all of this with you? Because I want you to know that in the dry seasons that are coming, there may come in your life. I'm not prophesying that, hey, you're going to have a dry season or, hey, you're going to have a dry season. But I'm letting you know that in the dry season, you realize that when you think of this, it has no dominion over you. It has no power over you because God has sustained you with the former rain, with the winter rain, and now because you've asked for the latter rain or rain in the latter season. He's there for you and he's going to provide for you. All you need to do is praise him and ask God for the rain. Amen? You all may take a seat. Who wants the rain? Oh, you want to stay up here? You can stay up here if you want yeah, come on up here. Come preach with me. Who wants the rain? So who wants the rain? If you stand to your feet, come on. Who wants the rain? Who is ready for God to reign in their life? Who is ready? Who's saying, Lord, here I am. Shine down on me. Father, pour out your rain on me. Let me receive it. Father, I'm not going to put up an umbrella. I'm not going to put up an umbrella of any type of thing that's going to keep you from reaching my life and pouring into my life. I'm opening myself up as a vessel to you for you to not only pour into me, but to overflow out of me so that others can witness your glory, your presence, your power, and who you are in my life and who you are to them. Amen? Amen. So I want you right now to just start praying. Start asking God. You all stood up to your feet saying you want the rain, all right? So tell them. Don't tell me. Don't show me. Tell him that you want the rain. Say, Father, or now don't say, Father, you talk to him. Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for the rain, Father God. We thank you for the examples you've shown us. We thank you for guiding us through all this time and letting us know about your glory, Father God, about your presence, about your power. And, Father God, that even though we've fallen short in some areas, Father, because of the rain that we have of you in our lives, Father, we're able to be sustained, we're able to be carried so that we're not dried out and we're not dead, Father God, so that our roots would not wither, so that our leaves would branch would not break off and snap easily once they're put to the pressure of life, O oh Lord. And Father, I just lift up everyone who's in here and those that are online, Father God, that as we go through this season, Father, this is a season of festivity. Today is the first day of Advent, a day of hope, Father God. But there are many that find themselves without hope, without 
joy, without happiness, because this seems like a season of loneliness, a season of depression. And Father God, I just come against that demonic spirit in the name of Jesus, and I speak hope into the lives of all those listening, that they do have something, they do have hope in you, they do have strength in you, they do have power in you, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. And Father, we repent for those times where you've been reaching out to us, but we didn't reach out to you, O Lord. For those times that you were ready to pour your rain on our lives, but we would look for shelter from something else, that we would look for an umbrella, that we would look for cover because we didn't want to get wet, Father God. But we thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy that you still come through and you still pour into us, Father. So we just thank you for this day, O Lord. We thank you for the weeks to come. We thank you for strengthening us and guiding us to do what you want us to do and carry out your commands in our life, Lord God. May we treat all others with grace, with mercy, and that we would share your true love with others as you continually pour into us all the goodness and grace of your life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So I encourage you all, ask for the rain. Don't worry about the dry seasons in your life. They're going to come and they're going to go. It's like seasons, come and go. But as long as you ask for God's rain in your life, all these seasons will come and you'll be able to do what God has ordained you, what he's called you, and what he's equipped you to do. Carry out his will. Amen? Amen. So God bless you all. For those watching online, we just thank God for you, and I look forward to seeing you all here next time at the Crossroads.